This is Twit. Okay, so today was the big unveiling. We saw some demos of DTSX, and we heard some more information about what to expect uh, coming down the pike. And it's coming down the pike pretty fast, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's see. At CES this year, DTS announced DTSX, our next generation audio codec. And we announced uh, that we were coming to the consumer space with this codec with a bunch of partners we had listed. Uh, and today what we're announcing is we're actually not just back in the consumer space with a new audio codec, but we're back in the cinema space. Yes, I found that very interesting about the press release. I mean, you you started, DTS started in the cinema space, right? Yeah, uh, we started in 1993, back in the days, of, we call it the Jurassic era of DTS. <laughs> Since that was the first movie to use DTS uh, audio was Jurassic Park, right? Yeah. No. That's right. So uh, back in those days, that was a soundtrack on a CD-ROM that was synced uh, to the actual uh, time code of the print of the film. Amazing. Uh, since we've evolved a little bit. But just a little bit, I would say. Um, and uh, since then, uh, DTS has become very well known in the consumer space. Um, I think one of your posters on your walls here uh, say that, uh, what, 93% of Blu-ray releases have a DTS HD master audio soundtrack, right? Yeah, you got it. So, so, you know, you're well entrenched in the consumer space, and now you're announcing a return to the cinema space, which we're going to talk about later with Bill Neighbors. Um, so for now, with you, I'd like to focus on the consumer space and uh, tell us what, is, what was announced today uh, for consumers. So we revealed a little bit more about the consumer program. So DTS-X, the format, is coming to the consumer space here this year. And uh, we've actually provided a little more um, detail about the timelines of consumer receivers uh, coming to market and uh, named a few more names. Uh, and uh, talked a little bit about uh, what that experience looks like. So a more immersive experience, a more flexible experience. And uh, we actually um, showed how you can actually personalize the experience by controlling the dialogue portion of the signal. Mm. So, um, yeah, go ahead. We should, we should mention that DTS-X is what's known as an object-based or object-oriented uh, system, wherein each sonic element is treated as an individual object. And it can be moved around, not only in the horizontal plane of traditional 7.1 or 5.1, but also overhead with what are called height speakers. And uh, one, of the, one of those objects actually can be the dialogue track. It doesn't have to be like a bird or a plane or, you know, Superman flying overhead. Uh, it can actually be the entire dialogue track, which allows you, and I think people have been asking for this for years, is to boost the level of the dialogue track for those of us who might have a little trouble hearing it. Yep, uh, absolutely. That is the number one consumer request we see in audio in general over and over again is, uh, you know, if I could just hear the dialogue in the movie, and and those use cases vary from when I'm watching uh, and I'm trying to keep it down for the neighbors on the other side of the wall to uh, I'm flying on an airplane and I you know just can't hear it. The explosions are loud, but the dialogue is quiet. I think we've all had that experience. And now that we are finally moving to this object-based paradigm, um, it's not just about creating an immersive signal. Uh, we can talk about how immersive this actually brings. It, it is truly an incredible sonic experience. But objects actually bring a lot of benefit to the interactive component of actually giving the consumer the ability to customize um, just uh, what they want to hear up from the dialogue. 